on this edition of Around BCC. BCC is in the forefront of educating students interested in science, technology, engineering, and math. BCC offers some out-of-the-box courses this spring. Our alum used her education to help students register for college, and our students take a lighthearted look at the new year. Happy New Year and welcome to Around BCC. I'm Keith Tebow. We hope you all had a great holiday season and we'd like to wish you a very prosperous 2014. Classes here at Bristol Community College are on break. They actually start later on this month. One of the, uh, the, the topics that is of note amongst educators across the country is the teaching of what's called the STEM fields. STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. And Bristol Community College has been in the for forefront of teaching STEM to its students here in Bristol County. We're going to talk a little bit about STEM uh, fields here at BCC. I'm joined by three guests in our first segment of the program. Joined by Megan Abella Bowen. She is the coordinator of the SAGE program, which is Sustainability and Green Energy. Is that correct? correct. Also, Dr. Uh, Beth Donovan, an instructor of math. We've had Beth on before to talk about Do math, you know? developmental math. Probably about a year ago. Yeah, just uh, about eight, nine months ago. Nine and, months ago. And also joining us is Dr. Katie Grinnell. She's an assistant professor of biology and in charge of biotechnology here at BCC. Ladies, thank you for joining me, and Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Let me ask you first of all, and Megan, I'll start with you. In, in general, uh, there's been a growing importance about science, technology, engineering, getting students involved in the future, if you will. Um, in your time here at BCC, how have you seen that take shape? And it's always been of importance here at BCC, but how have you seen it take shape here? I think you're seeing it grow. You're seeing a desire for a lot of the, um, to get that down into the middle school level and into the elementary school level. Mm -hmm. That we know we're missing a lot of young people coming into the fields because they haven't learned to love it and enjoy it. I know Beth will talk a lot about that. That they think it's hard and they don't know how exciting it can be. And so many times, a lot of the jobs and a lot of the growth in our region and certainly across the nation are in these jobs that are what we call the innovation economy. And those are gonna be science, engineering, technology, math kinds of jobs. And we're not drawing enough kids into those fields who then wanna go to work in those fields. And so I think creating awareness around it, showing how fun and interesting it can be is the first step. So I think you have seen it growing. We do a lot of things through career vocational technical ed, um, right on in through the college and continuing them on to four-year institutions. How difficult is it to keep up with the times, if you will? Things change and with technology and, and especially things like computer technology, it changes daily. I mean, never mind over a period of time. Uh, how, how important is it for uh, the college or any educational institution, Megan, to, to keep up with what's changing and, and while also serving the needs that a community college does of its workforce here locally? Sure. I, I think one thing to keep in mind is the technology changes, but the basic theory behind the math and the science right. does not. And so as long as we have a strong background in the theory of the math, the science, then the technology and the engineering process pieces of it will play out in that. So we still have to have a strong base of that science, that engineering, that technology, that math, and even they talk about STEAM, which is the arts, right. so that whole design piece there. But the basis is it's still a strong math and a strong science background that gets us going. And so we don't always have to be chasing the newest technology. What we need to do is make sure we have a strong base to begin with, and then those students have the skill sets, they have the problem solving, they have the inquiry to be able to take it to the next level. You're involved with a lot of green initiatives, sustainability. Talk about some of your uh, initiatives that you work on here and how students are involved in that? Certainly. Um, we um, spent the last three years really updating the engineering programming here at BCC. We added a lot of green technology into our program. So again, even if you're thinking about the wind energy field here in Massachusetts, mm -hmm. there's a big push for you still need good strong mechanical engineers and mechanical technicians, right. but they need to have an understanding for wind energy and wind technology. So we've integrated that into our program. The same thing with our electrical mechanical and our electrical. We've added solar 
are in there. So our students still come out as a strong technician or a strong engineering science background, but now they have a smattering of solar, a smattering of wind, a smattering of green building technologies if they're going down the civil side. So it's that idea of creating awareness and integrating things into it, but keeping the strong basis of the program starting. Mm. And then we certainly, again, we go into the high schools, we go into the middle schools, we do a lot of professional development at the high school level for teachers uh, to get them on board. So again, we're trying to draw those students in early and so that they're looking down the road and saying, well, what do I do after I finish high school? What are some right. options? Right. Beth, as you said, we talked last year about developmental math and getting students prepared to just with their college life here mm -hmm. at, at BCC. What are you seeing in terms of the, the, the different uh, kinds of math for students who want to get into engineering and um, and, and other te technological fields. It, that's a whole different level, isn't it? It, it, it really is, but um, here at BCC, one of the great things is, is the student can come in at a developmental level and um, still achieve an engineering degree in a reasonable amount of time. Yeah. It, this is a little more math, so it's a little more year-round application of yeah. going to school, but um, it really does allow a student to start at any level with their math and really achieve that dream of going into an engineering degree. Uh, they will have to proceed through, you know, um, all the, typically if you're going for like an engineering transfer degree, up through um, three levels of calculus and a differential equations class before you actually get out of here um, and go to a four-year institution, but um, I teach a lot of the upper level courses right now and so what we've really started to do is um, we have a lab component and in that we kind of in try to inspire our students with hands-on labs and labs that are engineering based and things like that. I usually, for example, um, ask my students what their majors are and kind of work in that respect, whether they're mechanical or they're electrical or green energy and we kind of try to hit on how they would use this in their job because as much as I love math, and I could just do math all day long, right. not their primary focus here. So we kind of try to um, pull the math in, and, and as Megan said, give them that really good fundamental basis. And my students often come back and say, oh, we did this in physics. Oh, we had this in chemistry. Like, oh, now I understand what they're doing in, um, in circuits. So really giving them that basis really starts to draw together. You know, even this, that one word problem here or there starts to like pull together all their courses and give them an understanding of why math is so important to them as an engineer. Mm. Or just in, in science, I know mm. Katie definitely has, um, you definitely need a good background in math in the sciences and, you know, any of the technology now. You really have to have um, a good fundamental mathematic understanding to really understand how to solve a problem and get that problem solving approach. Right. As much as we focused on uh, the needs of getting students uh, ready to take math here at BCC, again, we talked about that last mm -hmm. year with developmental courses, are you seeing maybe an equal number of students who are excelling that go into these fields? You know, you, 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 you think of, of, of math schools, BCC doesn't come mm -hmm. to mind, but, no. but in terms of these fields, they have to be up to snuff to take that next level. Are you seeing those high achievers as well? I do. I definitely see those high achievers. Some I've had before in class, some um, are totally, you know, new students and I haven't seen, depending on what courses I've taught in the past. Um, but we do have some students that really do excel, and I would love to be able to pull them aside and be like, hey, you get a math degree with this. But, right. um, you know, One I step always, at a time. I always, I always try. I always try. <laughs> but, yeah, I, we do have a significant number of students that are very, very bright here and do excel in the courses and want to be challenged more and more and want to see what's the next step. Why does this not work? I find my students ask a lot of why, right. which is not something you usually expect in a math class, but they start to um, understand the material and they start to question why I was allowed to do that or why can we proceed this way or why do I have to do this or what is my limitation on the question so and that comes from you know um, a lot of problem solving and students really having that fundamental basis and then wanting to know right. more right let's move to the science side Katie uh, you uh, teach biology um, there's a lot of technology now in the sciences and what are some of the things that you teach say in biology and biotech that will transfer into some of these students becoming successful in, in technology leaving here? I think the two are completely intertwined right now. Right. Um, <clears throat> even in my introductory courses, one of the skills, for example, they have to have in genetics and molecular biology is the ability to use computer programs to search for gene sequences and mutations 
look at the, how the protein that's produced from the gene changes if there's a mutation. So they, they can't go without, you know, education in math and computer science and some aspects of engineering, especially for biomedical engineering, which is a huge aspect of biotechnology. So it's, it's not, you know, science can no longer be its own island unto itself, just learning about photosynthesis and, and you know, sexual reproduction and things like right. that that are of the sort of old school. We're moving forward into the melding of multiple disciplines now. Yeah, and that was going to be my next point, especially you talk about biology. The first thing that pops in my mind is health. Right, and the and health that's, sciences mm -hmm. and just the technology changes that are within those fields. Mm -hmm. Again, it must be a little bit daunting sometimes to try to keep up, can it be? Well, you have to make a concerted effort to address that in your classes because the textbooks, if it, even if it's a current edition, are you know still two, three years out from when <laughs> they've been edited. So we want to keep them up, and I think that's part of our responsibility is to, to keep them, like Beth mentioned, well-versed, not just in the, the core curriculum of standard biology courses or standard math courses, but to incorporate in real life um, examples of what they're going to see. Because mm -hmm. the last thing we want is to send them out into nursing or into a biotech company and have them be completely lost with pieces of equipment which are brand new or technologies that have just been introduced. Right. One of the things I want to bring up is the three of you sort of buck a trend, if you will. Uh, people think of, of technology and, and scientists, they think of male-dominated uh, industries. You're all anathema to that. Talk about how you know, you're trying to get more females into these programs. Maybe, Megan, you can talk a little bit about that. Sure. Engineering, I think, always has had that sense. I, I think computer information sciences is probably has the hardest one because you don't see a lot of women in that. But the way that you try to express that and get it out to women today and to young girls is that engineering takes the science, takes the math, uses that technology to solve problems. Right. And when you when you package it as problem solving and making the place that we live in better, solving health issues, taking care of that person who may now need a prosthetic, how do we create a prosthetic for that person? Right. That really changes the dynamic, but we still have to get them through the theory of the basic sciences. And so the key is to say, how do we try to incorporate that in? And there is a big push at the K through 12 level to start integrating engineering design processes right. into sciences so that you're not just teaching theory, but once a student has the theory, then integrate that theory into to solving a problem so it embeds that idea right. into it and making it stronger. And I think that you're going to see more girls coming in the more they see that. Right. Megan, Beth, and Katie, I appreciate you joining me. We're going to be taking a short break and we'll talk to some students that are currently in the BCC STEM fields. We'll come back with that right after this. Welcome back to our discussion here on Around BCC on how BCC handles the STEM fields of education, science, technology, engineering, and math. I'm pleased to be joined now by two students who have undergone uh, technology and engineering training here at Bristol Community College. On my far left is Fabiano Paiva. He is a, a student uh, engineering transfer, actually going to be uh, transferring to UMass Dartmouth coming up uh, this semester, this spring. And also joining us is Sandy De Silva. She is a current uh, student in the CIS, Computer Information Systems Program. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. Sandy, let me start with you. Um, I, I ended the last segment about the stigma in terms of females joining uh, you know, the STEM fields. Let me ask you, what interests you about computer information systems? Well, I mean, I think just the, in general, where you, in the, any type of computer information, you kind of come into it and you don't have any idea of how something works. It, you can go in and uh, open up a computer and kind of try to figure out why, why it does what it does, or right. a program. Um, you know, why does a program, when you press a button, what does it do? Why does it do that? And then knowing how to program something to make it do what you want it to do. Mm. So a lot of that stuff interesting. I'm just really interested on pretty much how things work. Right. How have your classes been? Have, has it been what you thought they would be when you got into this field? I mean, it, it sounds like it is because you're asking yourself a lot of questions. Yeah. And that's usually how classes work. You ask questions and you get answers on, in this case, how computers work and how software works. 
Um, well, when I first came in, uh, I, my first class was uh, my CS120 with Professor Grossa, and I was very intimidated right at the beginning. I'm yeah. like, am I going to be able to do this? But literally, I, I mean, looking back now from today, from that first day that I started, I almost say, well, why did I say that to myself? Because I, I'm amazed of everything that I know now and what I've learned from either her or any other classes, either networking classes that I've taken right. or, you know, anything like that. It's just, it, you can learn a lot. You just have to put your mind to it. Yeah. You also work at the one of the computer labs help yeah. desks here at, uh, at the Fall River campus. Does that help you at all in not only just answering people's questions, but does it help you learn more ab about the technologies that you hope to work in? Or is it more of just, you know, I'm helping people out, I enjoy to help people? Um, yeah, it gives you like a little bit of both. Right. I mean, yeah, I, absolutely. I like enjoy to help people if they're like trying to figure something that it's not working or just they're writing a paper or something like that. But like, I think more so the stuff that I've done, not just with helping people, but behind the scenes. Right. Uh, I worked here in the summer. I learned so much about networking, and that really wasn't even yeah. my major. Right. But. I learned so much during the summertime, it was unbelievable. Mm. Like, I, I feel so comfortable and, you know, you could probably put me in any type of technology or any facet in the computer industry and um, I know I'd probably pick it up because yeah. I feel that comfortable about it. Fabiana, first congratulations. You've completed your education here as of December here at BCC. Uh, what interests you about engineering and do you have any specific discipline within engineering that you'd like to pursue? Uh, yes. What interested me, uh, what interested me about engineering was that I like w working with my hands. I like, ha um, like I like figuring stuff out. I like fixing things like themselves. That's why when I originally came to BCC, I went for electrical engineering. Okay. I went to a tech school. I did electricity there, and I wanted to go to college. So I figured electrical engineering. I know some electrical work. I could work with like control panels, all that stuff, um, circuitry, and all that stuff. Um, and then I found out BCC offered the biomedical engineering right. program and what really interested me about that was all throughout high school I took honors biology I took AP biology and I just love biology and sciences and I did some more research on it and it just really caught my eye and I took a couple classes in fact I took Katie's class on intro to biotech and I just loved it I've been doing it ever since like after my first semester I just transferred into the bioengineering and I love it well, two great success stories of, uh, of students here who are in science, technology, engineering, and math. A lot of math, a lot of sciences, yeah. and apparently it's something you really, you really like any profession, you really have to love to, to get into it. So um, Sandy and Fabiano, we wish you all the best in your future educational pursuits, and, and thanks for joining us. Thanks. Thank you. We'll have more of Around BCC right after this. The uh, our flagship, our staple, thing that you probably have to eat when you come here is either the American Dream Burger, which is a bacon cheeseburger with a molasada buns or like a Portuguese steak burrito or the chicken Mozambique burrito just because it's a classic to this area. My name is Alexander Tavares and I'm the head chef at Viva Comida. We're at 1345 Pleasant Street, 4 of Mass, uh, the heart of the Flint. Uh, Viva Comida is a restaurant me and my partner Louis Silva came up with. Coming from this area, you know, uh, things aren't always easy. Things aren't handed to you either, you know. I've worked for everything that I've accomplished in my life. I graduated from Jeffrey High School in 03. Uh, I went to BCC around 03, 04. Um, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with my life just yet. I got into culinary arts, which was always my true passion. I just wasn't sure about the possibilities once you graduated and stuff like that. Being in the uh, culinary arts department at BCC was awesome because you got to experiment with pretty much anything and everything. Every week we would do a different nationalities cuisine, so I'm pretty well versed in not just American, Portuguese, and Spanish, because I was trained French. It's German, Asian, um, and every other aspect of cooking you can possibly learn. Chef Carissimo was a, a great impact on my life. He was probably one of the greatest chefs to date I've ever worked for. You know, he really pushed me not only to be able to do things, but he always stressed that um, it's not enough to be able to do something. You need to be able to know what you're doing and what's going on, the who, what, and why, and where, to be able to have an intelligent conversation with somebody about what you're producing. 
you know, not to just be able to do it. I probably wouldn't be half the chef I am now without his influence in my life. You know, it was a really a positive influence in my life and it really pushed me to get as much as he could out of me. Yeah, here at Viva Comida, we just try to rethink your food. We just spin a little twist on uh, some of our of his favorite dishes, such as chicken Mozambique, Portuguese steak plates. We just uh, throw them in burritos, so it's uh, everything people love about burritos and Portuguese steak plates rolled into one, basically. I wanted to give back to the neighborhood that basically raised me, so I wanted to do something positive. Future of Viva Comida is the uh, sky's the limit. Right now, we're in week one of being open. Uh, eventually, if things go as well as we hope, uh, we'd like to open up a second and a third and maybe just keep going. Maybe even be international at some point, maybe uh, go to Azores or Portugal or something. Welcome back. As we mentioned at the outset of the show, the spring 2014 spring semester at Bristol Community College kicks off later this month. One of the unique aspects of spring semester every year is that faculty have the opportunity to offer courses that provide students with experiences outside of their major. Each semester, the college holds a course fair to introduce students to academic opportunities of which they may not have been aware. One such course for the 2014 spring semester is a special topics course on the environment and sustainability. Course coordinator Nancy Lee Wood says what makes this course unique is that it will be taught by 12 members of the BCC faculty. The way we're doing it is that each week each instructor is responsible for putting together a quiz based on the material that he or she has presented. Uh, we're going to have a blog that each person, each faculty member, uh, creates a question and students respond to that to that blog and then respond to each other's blogs about that whatever the question may be but it's related to each person's discipline those interested in multimedia may want to take a course in sound design in multimedia taught by instructor Mary Edwards it's for people who are interested in learning not only the practical aspects of how to develop or capture sound but also people who are interested in learning, on, learning about how sound is used in everyday life, whether it be sound installations, film, multimedia, gaming, all those really interesting things and exciting things that are out there that incorporate sound. Things that we often take for granted that where the emphasis is on the visual, audio sometimes gets disregarded, but you know, it's, a, it's a wonderful field to be involved in. And for those who are interested in going further, and just uh, moving past learning the basics of sound and multimedia, it's for people who also are looking at career options. There's still time to register for those and other courses for the spring 2014 semester. For more information, contact the college or visit the BCC website. BCC has a new chief academic officer. President Dr. John Spraga has announced that acting vice president of academic affairs Greg Satharis has been hired to the position permanently. Mr. Satharis has been in the role of acting vice president since July of 2012. One update from a story we covered during last month's show. In early December, the BCC Board of Trustees, by a 7-2 vote, gave final approval to allow campus police officers to carry firearms. Officers will now begin the training needed to meet the college's new policy. It's expected that it'll be late spring before the police officers will be carrying firearms on campus. Time to profile another BCC alum. This month we talked to a recent grad who used her BCC education in succeeding at her current role of introducing students to another state higher educational institution. Hi, I'm Jill Ferreira, BCC class of 2010. I grew up in New Bedford and I went to Bishop Stang High School. I really wasn't sure at all what I wanted to do. Um, and I decided to, to stay local and to, to go to Bristol Community College, which I, I went on a tour and I really liked the feel of the campus and it just felt, it felt very right. I appreciated the atmosphere very much. So I started in my, my first set of classes. I, I was doing really well. A faculty member had reached out to me and recommended the honors program and I hadn't, I wasn't really aware of the honors program and it, uh, it ended up being an incredible experience. Some of the first things I noticed that I really liked about BCC atmosphere is this small class sizes, like 25, 
20 students, 10 students even to some classes, which is really, really nice when you're trying to have a, a meaningful discussion about a particular topic or, um, you know, helping others work through a particular idea. I really appreciated the smaller, um, the small class sizes. Um, the, the ability for faculty members to reach out to students and develop, um, you know, really great networking opportunities for them on an individual basis was something that really stood out to me as well. After I graduated with my associate's degree from, from BCC, I decided to transfer over here to UMass Boston and work towards a bachelor's degree. I've, as a student worker, I've, I've, I've worked in multiple um, offices on this campus, which has led to really great opportunities, even a staff position after I've graduated here. Um, academically, I've, I've declared various majors and subtracted majors and added minors and switched majors and minors, so, um, which I think is pretty common sometimes with students um, who aren't sure what, they're, what they want to do. But um, I declared anthropology as, as, my, as my major, and I double majored, majored in psychology as well. I was loving it. I, I remember um, I thought back to BCC when I initially was interested in culture through the Deaf Studies program, and, and that really sparked my interest in um, difference in language and difference in community, and, and that's something that I I can see myself doing in the future working as possibly um, an ESL teacher or applied linguistics or something like that. It's, it's a direction I feel confident that I, that I could. I feel very well founded through BCC and UMass Boston now um, academically and through personal relationships that I've made. So I graduated from UMass Boston in 2013. I'm working now as a representative in the admissions office. I love it. I'm meeting with people every day and talking about what what their options are for um, for applying here and academic program offerings that might be best for them to declare um, um, working through the application process with people um, is something I, I really enjoy my education at BCC is incredibly helpful to where I am now through the people that I was able to meet the connections that I was able to make um, and the education. It was an incredible education. The BCC men's and women's basketball teams have completed their fall schedule. At the break, the men have a record of 6-5 and five, while the women sit at 4-7. and seven. Both squads return to the court later this month. Check out the BCC website for more information. I'd like to take time now to thank our fall 2013 interns for lending a hand on the show. Adam Kitchen, Denise Pumaguaye, and Alec Johnson Cabral produced our student to student segment. They have one final installment to present, and it's a lighthearted, even comical look at New Year's resolutions. Hello, I'm Alec Nicholas Johnson Cabral IV, and today I'll be working with FRC Media to interview people on their New Year's resolutions. Let's see what we can find. Hi, I'm here with Jerry, and I was wondering, what would your New Year's resolution be this year? Well, I'm turning 65 today, so my plan for the New Year is to get younger. How would that be working out for you? It's probably not going to work, no. <laughs> I'm here with Melanie Johnson, otherwise known as Mom, who seems to be too busy typing on the keyboard. So, I would like to ask you, what would be your New Year's resolution? Um, Next, we're here with Mason St. Jakes, and World was wondering, what is your New Year's resolution? Hmm. Well, you see, I really don't talk to girls, so my resolution would probably be just start talking to females. I guess we all can't be mean. You smell bad, too. And we're here with Alexander Pacheco, and World was wondering, what's your New Year's resolution? Um, it's Pacheco, by the way. All right, no one cares, Dave. Just no. Answer the question. But my name's not Dave. Right, did you understand? You just have to answer the question. It's not a hard thing. Are you sure? I'm sure. Um, Camera, can we do this? You know, doing that kind of messes it up. All right, you know what? Time's out. I don't even like you. <laughs> oh, today we're here with Anthony Savino. What is your New Year's resolution? That's a pretty noble resolution, I have to say. I'm pretty, uh, I can't say anything funny about you. It's pretty original. Can't change anything at all. It was nice meeting you, sir. Got a nice beard. 
Well, that's about it for the student side of the show, and sadly, this internship is coming to an end. But I would like to thank everyone from SFRC Media. You guys and gals have taught me so much in just such a short amount of time, and I just want to thank you. This is... You know, this was a wonder to be, have the privilege to work with you guys, learn, have experience on the field, and be able to do this little comedy routine was just a wonder for me. So I just want to thank you guys again, and this is Alec Nicholas, John Ticabral IV. That's all for Round BCC this month. I'm Keith Tebow. Thanks for watching.